we've made it we are here we are at mount gambia jail so old mount gambia yeah. jail yes we are i'm um, just going to turn you around and cag's going to light it up a little bit so you can get a bit of a view of it so this is the outside and we have been here before we've been here a couple of times before we never ever meant to come and investigate. We've got our own cells now. We? Yeah, we got our own rooms, haven't we? Our yeah. own two cells. We keep uh, reoffending. <laughs> <laughs> we keep coming back in. So, and tonight we have our lovely host just over here, Mel. Hi. Oh, that looks creepy because you've got big red moon coming up behind you. So, <laughs> and Mel actually runs the Mount Gambia Jet. Do you actually own it? We How's how's it work? Created the business, but the actual building is owned by the Mount Gambia community. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, so it'll always be owned by our community, which is great. Which is great because yeah. it'll be safe then, which yeah. is awesome. So, and how long have you been here? We've been here for eleven years this year. So we started in October in two thousand and ten, and um, yeah, so that'll be eleven years this year. Okay, and it's rather unique, isn't it? I Living think, in a jail. Yes, I do believe. <laughs> I do believe that we're the only family in Australia that choose to live in a jail. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're here with your kids. Yep. Yeah. We and moved in 2010 and we live in the front part of the jail with our three kids. So yeah, run the business and live on site. Yeah. And people have been kind of asking me about the fact about the ghosts here and I've told them, well, you know, you live here Yeah. with kids. We get asked that question a lot. Are you haunted? For me, being haunted would mean that there's paranormal things happening all the time and that people couldn't stay. We don't have that sort of activity here since we've been here. And yeah, like you say, if there was, I don't think my kids would be able to stay here and sleep. So, and of course, they, they're how unique for them to live in the jail. So what have they been like growing up here? Well, they know nothing different. I think this has just been all that they know. So they think it's pretty cool or, or pretty normal. Where at anyone else that we meet or being down the supermarket and, you know, we say it's time to go home and they're like, back to jail. <laughs> you know, people look at you like you're absolutely mad. But yeah, it's very <laughs> unique and kooky, but it serves us. It, it suits us. Yeah. So so it was originally built in 1866 yep. and it uh, stopped as a functioning prison in 1994. So not very long ago. Okay. All right. Shall we go in? Yeah, let's Excellent. do it. Excellent. Let's do it. Come in. There we go. Take us for a little walk around. Okay. Let us know. Okay, guys, and it is cold, just to let you know. <laughs> it's freezing. It is cold. <laughs> so this is our foyer. You can see it opens up. Uh, and this is like a heart of the jail, and from there we have different wings that take off. Behind. Just look at this way, guys. Look at this. How cool is that? This was the original warden's residence, uh, where the keepers of the jails originally would live in with their families, and that's where we live now with ours, in that whole front section. Have you ever yeah. had anything happen in this section here? Uh, yes, <laughs> I, I have. Um, There'll be times when you're laying in bed and people will stroke your face. Mm -hmm. um, we have an alarm system in here, obviously, for our fire the, with all the accommodation, yeah. and often that will go off. So there'll be no one, there'll be people in here, and there's no fire at all. But in our house, the sensor will go crazy, waking us all up, but it's not going anywhere else in the jail. And that can happen some nights, three or four times. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, but not yeah. consistent. Yeah, you know, just every now and then it will just happen. Yeah. Um, doors locking, you'll go to lock a door and then you'll go back later and it's open. Little things like yeah. that. Um, but nothing untoward or, okay. yeah, just, well, obviously you wouldn't be living in it. No, so that's right. It's untoward. <laughs> yeah. And it you encourage <laughs> the chopping. We do, we H -H. love. H -H. Oh my gosh, yes, look. We love people leaving their artwork behind. I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> We, it's always astonishing you come out and we have some amazing artists that come and stay and they'll just leave you this most beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, it's, it's turned into a little bit of a, a little bit of a, um, thing you have to do as a guest, I guess. Oh, we haven't done it yet. And we wash it down every few months and then they all pop up again. Can I tell them what? Yes, what please. Happened? All right, guys. Here's my personal story, okay? These are our rooms. It's a mess because I've pulled out all my stuff, <laughs> all right? So this is one of the bedrooms. As you can see, I've got all the gear out at the moment. So it used to be a cell. Which cells were, were these, these long-term? These are the long-termers. 
All right, these were the long termers. Um, we get these because they've got non sweet on the night. I like my own. <laughs> so, <laughs> but the first night I was here, because we didn't come here to investigate the first time we ever came. Uh, we came, sorry, make sure I've got the key in the lock there. But we came just to spend the night because it's an old jail and we love jails, because especially with working in the Adelaide jail. And I. <laughs> First night I was in there, I was asleep in the bed. I had all the stuff next to the bed ne next to me, like my jewellery and stuff that taken off, my earrings. And I woke up in the middle of the night and I could hear clearly somebody as if they were rifling through my things on the bedside table. <laughs> so it's like, it's like, I said to you the next morning, didn't I? <laughs> it's, like, it's a very common yeah. occurrence in those It's days. just like, they're just yeah. curious. Yeah. Just, yeah, what's she got in here? Yeah. Have in these two cells, yeah. we've had some guests that will often say that they lose, like they'll put their watch down and then they can't find it and yeah. they'll come and ask us if we've seen it or report it missing, but they always find their pieces before they leave. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know whether they're misplacing it or yeah. someone's being mischievous, but yeah, yeah it is, it's yeah. not uncommon to hear. Yeah. Three executions here? Yes, there were. Now, is it true that maybe one of them is buried behind these cells? It's a possibility. It's a possibility. So yeah. you don't really know where they are? No. The Amagambi Historical Group did a lot of research on the place before we took over, yeah. and they tried to ascertain exactly where the three men were buried, because the law back in the day was you had to be yeah. buried within the walls of the jail, as you know. Yeah. Um, but there's no actual evidence to say where they were. Yeah. There used to be um, marks on the walls. So we've had inmates that would say, we saw a mark here, we saw a mark there. But it's all been whitewashed and painted over. Oh. Um, we, the wardens have said, from the time, have said where they think they may be. But it's only where we think, unfortunately. Yeah. So we do believe there's one behind you guys. And there's two over on the other, yeah. Yeah. On the other side. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. Reassuring. But who is where, we don't know, unfortunately. <laughs> this room, we believe, would have been where they would put people that they needed to keep an eye on. So yeah. where we're standing right now used to be, like I guess, the maximum security area of the jail. Right. And this cell... you've actually got wire above yeah. as well, haven't you? Yeah. And this cell is the only one that we had that has a mirror, so you can see in, and that's why we assume, obviously, that that was yeah. a room where they would put people that they need to keep an eye on. We've obviously painted it for in the um, guest side, yeah. yeah. But that's the only one that's like that. That bit there. So they can, yeah. So it's not just a peephole; they can yeah. really keep an eye. Really keep an eye. Yeah. On. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So what was what was this area? So this room in front of us was uh, originally it didn't exist, and it was built in the late seventies, um, early seventies perhaps, as a mess room for somewhere for them to eat their meals undercover. Because until this room was built, all the inmates and prisoners had to eat their meals outside. Yeah. And Mount Gambia's got fantastic weather, so <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't have been pleasant at all. So this used to be a yard. This was the, yeah, the end of the yard, and then they built it to house it once so they could eat their meals without and it. Anything happening in here? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably the most active spot that where we've had reports right. from. Um, since the day we took over, we've had lots and lots of locals that have had functions in here. It used to be um, a place where there'd be heavy metal bands in here and all sorts of stuff. Um, and then since we've come in, it's been more about parties and engagements and things like yeah. that. But it's, I've had a lot of women report to me that they feel strange things in here. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, two or three different women that have said they've seen a man with a, a black hat walking through here. Right. Um, yeah, so. Like a guard or I don't a know. Or... I don't think so. But the ladies told me it was like one of those little point, like the, you know that they used to wear that were quite high. I don't right. know what they were called. Yeah. But they say that, because usually this is packed with people, yeah. and the women that have told me that have seen him walking through, but they know that it's not a person. Yeah. 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 Which is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So this is where we've set up. As you can see, we've got all the equipment out. So the first part of what we're going to do is we're going to do it here. Now, if we're not getting a lot happening in here with all of us, then I'm going to go and do a lone vigil in another cell over there. So, and it all looks nicely lit up, but I walked through here earlier <laughs> when all the lights were off on my own, got trying to find keg. Trust me, it's a little bit creepier. And I actually did balk at this idea 
as I walk past and put my head in there and it's dark because I will do a little bit of a lone vigil for you all in the condemned man cell, which is just over here. So <laughs> we're going to have a look at that, shall we? <laughs> So just as we're walking past, I'll just let you know one of the yeah. bodies is believed to be buried at the end there. Okay. Where those bins are. Right. So this is all that in the, obviously, in the yard. Yeah. Before that one, yeah. And yeah. then the other one is believed to be buried over in that corner. Okay. The man cell is um, in respect or homage to the three men that yeah. were hanged in here. Like that? Is it hanged by? Hanged. I was, <laughs> yes, I was wondering when you would get that right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we have a little thing going. <laughs> it's a little bit of standing joke. <laughs> um, so, guys, I'm going to be in here. Now, there was three men that's hanged correct. here. Yes. I remember one of them. Yes. Young. Carl Young. It's the same as the psychiatrist, isn't it, Carl Young? Yes. Yeah. And two others. Yes. And William Nugent and I think it was Page. Oh, yeah, yeah, William, William Page. Page. Yeah. Three of the men had committed murder. Yeah. And so back in those days, the, uh, when they were trialled and sentenced, it was to be hanged. And from what we know, they would spend their last nights in this particular cell and then they would walk over to the laundry where we believe the apparatus was set up before it was a laundry. Yeah. The first one, Carl Jung, it was a bit of an unfortunate affair. He had just lost his daughter and was really down on his luck. Um, he was very well known locally and a trooper was sent out from Mount Gambia over to the Carolines where Carl and his family lived. The trooper drove out, or rode out there on a horse, there was no car back then, and when he got there he actually knew Carl well enough and asked if he could stay the night and so Carl extended his hospitality to this gentleman. Then the next morning, the trooper got up and started putting all his pigs and stock attached to his little cart and said, I'm taking it home because you have debts that you haven't paid for. And this just set Carl off over the edge. Uh, his family were destitute, they were doing it really hard. And so they got into an argument and he killed the trooper and then hid the body and then he went out bush. But he went, they found him on his daughter's grave. He tried to take his wife after oh, he did it. Yeah. So once his wife knew that he was there and he'd done it, they handed themselves in. Yeah. So there were a heap of businessmen in Mount Gambia that put a petition together to the court in Adelaide and said, please take uh, mercy on this man. This is not normal for him. But alas, he was sentenced to hand. Yeah. And what year was that? Uh, that was in 1871, 10th of November. Right. Oh, yeah, sad. it was very sad and he was executed inside the jail walls. There were people watching and he had a rose in his hand for his wife oh, and he just asked yeah. everyone, he <laughs> gave everyone yeah. in the crowd and yeah, it was quite a sombre affair. Yeah. 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 And this area is quite unusual for us because it was never used to house prisoners as far yeah. as we know. It was never spelled. It was... Um, Officers for the wardens and the keepers, and then later on the social workers, the staff. Yeah. Um, and I do believe it was actually the uh, medical rooms and stuff like that out here as well. Yeah. And this is the session we'll do for the Patreon slides about the So these rooms originally were the offices, and we now use them for um, dorm style bedding yeah. and accommodation. Very simple and basic, but still got the really high roofs and the really big arch windows. With the bars on it. Yeah. <laughs> so have you ever had anything happen in this section? Only in one of the rooms, which right. is this room just here. Um, and the only time we have any issue is when we put men in there. Okay. Um, there have been some stories come back to us from a couple of guests very early on that um, when they laid in that room, they did feel somebody laying down fully on top of them. Okay. Like session. Yeah. Room. Yeah, okay. but when we have school kids and when we have families in here, we never have any issues. No. It's just if there is someone here, they seem to have a problem with men. But I time. guess if you've got men, new men coming in, and I find that in the jail, it's almost like that pecking order. You have the dominant prisoners or the dominant guards. Yeah. If you get a new person coming in, a new male, but you yeah. may be a threat. It's territorial, isn't it? It could be a territorial yeah. thing that you just say, just, you know, yeah. Remember where you place and Yeah. I always wonder if that still to an extent happens. I do too. So and I also feel like I was not that I think it's just hey. Yeah. 
Especially, I think yeah. especially with prisons too, um, there'd be some that this would be home for them. Yes. You know, if yeah. you spend so much time here working yeah. or as a, as a prisoner, I guess there'd be some people that this would be their home. So, well, some people used to re to come to back. back in. Yeah. So this area obviously is our laundry now. It's nothing yeah. flash or exciting. However, before it was a laundry, it was a nice big open area with just that wall behind. And we do believe that this area and just behind us is where the apparatus was brought through and erected when we had those three men. So that building wasn't there, was no, it? No, it wasn't there. And just behind that building is a double door. And this is why we believe it probably came through there. Mm -hmm. Because every other part of the jail has got very sharp turns. And I just, I'm not sure how the apparatus to get it through, yeah. would be brought through. Yeah. yeah. So it would make sense. Plus you said there was about 20 people? Yes, about 20, 20 people. Because back in those days it was a social affair. You'd go and yeah. watch people behind. Especially if it was <coughs> done to yeah. your family and you'd mm. be invited in. Yeah. yeah. So there was about 20 people here to watch Carl. Is there any other, I mean obviously we've gone for a little walk around. Is there mm -hmm. any other activity that you've had, any other thing that's happened to you or your husband? Or? Uh, yeah, we've seen, early, very early on my husband saw a child run past our office and yes. he was actually are 100% sure that it must have been one of our nephews, yeah. but he was not here at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and that sort of confused us a little bit because it was a child, but back in those days it was very common that mm -hmm. if women were incarcerated that they would bring their children in to serve the time yeah. with them. Uh, and we also had children that were incarcerated too. We had kids as young as eight but come they in. They were seen differently back then. They weren't seen as so much children were they? I mean, they yeah. were working. They were working. <laughs> and this particular child I'm thinking of, I think he was drinking seven at the or eight, or something. Yeah. and he had forged a check for his master, whoever he worked for, yeah. and it was a five pound check, and he was sentenced in here, I think, for 32 days or right. something, with 30 lashes on his way out. Ooh. But the women of okay. Nat Gambia rallied around this child, yeah. and um, he ended up not getting any lashes, which is brilliant. Yeah. So. When we first took over, we had um, lots of people that were living in here. So we sort of shared the premises with um, some men that were in between houses. Yeah. And um, when we take our children to school, we actually walk along through this courtyard, out the door and across the paddock. And the school's actually built behind us, which is a little bit mm. odd. This one day, it was 8.30 in the morning, I'd just dropped my son off at school. And I walked straight back through here. And as I went past this area here, a gentleman walked past me and I said, hello. And I thought, that's a bit rude that he didn't comment or reply, but mm. as soon as he walked past me, I just felt that incredible sick feeling mm. and turned around and he was absolutely gone. So he looked like an, a tradie Every that would just day. walk yeah. past you. He was yes. incredibly tall, with a very dark, like a hard yakka dark blue shirt rolled up to his elbows yeah. and the same sort of slacks that all the men used to wear. My pa used to wear them all the yeah. time. Um, and didn't say a word, but walked straight past me in the morning. Yeah, and then gone. And then gone, oh, yeah. Wow. So I still have no idea who he was, yeah. but yeah, that happened in daylight. Yeah. So yeah, things okay. happen quite a lot, yeah. but nothing scary or nothing, anything. Well, no, yeah. nothing. Yeah. It doesn't feel intimidating or scary. Yeah. Uh, mind you, I haven't said on my own <laughs> way yet to the dark, but imagination will get the better of you, I'm sure yeah. it'll get the better of me. But it doesn't feel, we have stayed twice before, this is our third visit here, and we haven't done the ghost hunting before, yeah. and it's been a very nice feel, it's yeah. just been a very... Thank you pleasant. for saying that. No, it is. It's a lot it we is. Have a, we have a lot of people back. saying that, that yeah. the energy is great, and it feels yeah. really family friendly, and kids absolutely yeah. love it. Yeah. But I think um, if there's one message that I would like to get out to anybody yes. watching this, Spirits are everywhere, yeah. you know, they're not just contained yeah. in old buildings, they're all around us, so if you can see them, you see them everywhere. Yeah. found out after we moved in that um, my great-great-great-great-grandfather yeah. was the third keeper here and lived where we live now with um, our kids. He lived there and raised his nine children and he actually died there too at 56 from the ninja cockle. So, so, did you know that before you got the job? No, not at all. Oh. No. So, it's funny how history wheels turn. It really does. And the only way we found it was uh, I mean, I knew I had a similar name, but yeah. it's quite common that yeah. that would happen. But when we were moving into the house, we had a um, wardrobe that we had to fix, and behind the skirting board, one of our friends who's a tradie found a bit of paper, a card, mm. and picked it up. 
And it was a Christmas card uh, addressed to, it had a girl's name on the back that was the same as mine. And that <laughs> sent us on a bit of a search through the history group. Yeah. And it turned out that he was my long lost descendant. So, oh, wow. yeah. Maybe she was meant to find it. Yes, <laughs> it would seem that way. We framed it now and we put it over in there. All right, well, I reckon we'll get all the lights turned off. That's all yep. right, of course. We'll head over to... Over to Stover that way. <laughs> She's lost. <laughs> really I can see. <laughs> I have to look at a condenser and go down that way. Yeah. Um, and we'll get started. We'll start to um, yep. get going. Okay. Do some investing. You're joining us. Yeah, that'd be Excellent. great. Excellent, because you know the place. We've not done a lot of history, guys. And the reason we don't do it is then we're not biased by anything. But if anything comes through, the Mel here can say, oh, yeah, that actually makes sense. So this is why we love having our hosts with us. So I'm excited. It is, guys. We would totally recommend you coming here. We love this place. Absolutely love it. It is so cool. It's so unique, isn't it? That's the thing we love about it as well. Very unique, yeah. Yeah. I mean, where else do you go to sleep in a well? Without without committing a crime, <laughs> where else can you go and stay in a cell? I'm just turning things on, guys. There is no magic bullet to making anything happen. So all we're doing is we're fishing. Do you have ghost tube on there? Well, I did on my old one, but this is my new one, so... All right. We're just going to put another form... It's an app. I'm not usually big on apps, but we do know the person who um, programmed this app. It's called Ghost Tube. It was programmed by Jared from Amy's Crypt. And I do know how he's programmed it to the capabilities of the phone. So most of the time it'll be random. Even he'll say that, it's reading its environment. So if you're here tonight, all you have to do is go up to these lights, light them up. And we're not asking you to perform like a circus animal. All we're doing is asking you just to let us know you're there because... What was that? What was that? That was behind us over there. Which corner? So I was always... All right, so if there is anybody here tonight, over here, I have a little box with an orange light on it. If you can try and talk or put your voice on that box, we can listen back and see if you've said anything. So we've introduced ourselves, I've introduced myself, so is Cag, and you know Mel. But we'd love to know what your name is. You've been seen in here. Man that's seen in here, did you work in here? In the jail? Did you hear that? I thought it was like a tick tick. Yeah. At the back. Yeah. That was the building. same spot. That wasn't building music. No. No. That wasn't building noise. No. Thank you for that. That's another one. Funny. Funny. Okay. Do you think that was funny? How many of you? It's not a big jail. So how many of you are still here? I gather this is your home. All right, so what we're gonna do is listen back. Again, there's no magic bullet, guys. It's just, it's like fishing. You throw your line out. Grandfather. Grandmother. Grandfather. <laughs> oh, grandfather. Oh, I wonder if that's mine. <laughs> we all look at Mel for that one. <laughs> yeah. 
His name was David. Okay. Very interested in the equipment because it wouldn't be used well, to this sort of thing. In the time you've been here, has anybody ever come in and... We have never, in the 11 years we've been here, we've never allowed anyone. Right. So whether they've done it without our knowledge, but we've always said yeah. no. Yeah. So you ladies the first ones that we've invited. Our privilege do we. Yeah. But I have been telling them all week that we've got all these new toys to play with. <laughs> so hopefully they're excited to give it a go. Alright, so if there is anybody here tonight, over here, I have a little box with an orange light on it. If you can try and talk or put your voice on that box, we can listen back and see if you say anything. So we've introduced ourselves, I've introduced the ting, wasn't it? We can listen back and see if you say anything. So we've introduced ourselves, I've introduced we myself. Didn't tag it. No, we didn't tag it. No, now. But we'd love to know what your name is. The man that's seen in here, did you work in here? In the jail? Sister. So that was the. That was Yeah. Because that wasn't a building thing. No. Yeah. A lot of people are hearing whispering. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, guys, sorry. No, no, that was a building noise. I gather this is your home. That was that big thing, was it? No, we didn't mention it. We didn't tag it. That was a bang. I gather this is your home. How could we not have tagged that? I don't know, because it's a loud one. So there's nothing what we call a Class I AVP, which is a definite voice. Uh, I agree, there seem to be some under whispers mm -hmm. occasionally, but it's so weak, so small. We can't even say it's not just noise, shh, artifacts. So. But that's okay. And you've got to remember, guys, that this hasn't been done before with all this equipment. We just expect whatever's here... To know what to do. To know what to do. Um, <laughs> what just said, say? are you okay? Oh, that's true, Kat. They're asking if I'm okay. I'm loving coffee. That's okay. It's just because I've been doing a lot of tours this week, so... Yeah, she hasn't got... Hello. The video camera just turned itself off. Oh. That was a full battery. We've just charged it. It had three hours in it. Okay. Maybe someone's private. That click that you just heard was our video camera switching off. It had a three hour battery. Nobody just turned it on when we. Okay. Before the lights go out, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody playing with the batteries in here. That's where everything just goes out. It's like every horror movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. All right. The other thing is this. And it'll be one of the most controversial things that we do tonight. So what this is, guys, it's called a ghost box. It's a broken radio, and I had big trouble ever using this because every bone in my body goes, it's a broken radio. It throws out snippets of radio. You're going to hear local stations from kind of AM bandwidth, but it's going through white noise as well. Most of it is going to be radio, guys. We know that, but sometimes, sometimes something other appears to creep in. The more I've done this, and I we do this every day, several hours a night, the more I've got rid of that, what should work, what shouldn't work, that doesn't make sense working, and going, go with it. All right, it's all electronic, and whatever we seem to be dealing with does seem to be able to manipulate electronics as well. 
now. No. That's like, no, disagrees no. with me. Yeah. <laughs> Make me into a liar, why don't exactly. you? Exactly. So. We're not here to be disrespectful or to upset anybody tonight. That's not why we're here. I thought I had a little leave then. We're only here because we're curious. Mel is curious. We'd just like to know who it is that's around. No doubt you were looking after the place as well. You'd have been here a lot longer than Mel and James. Hopefully you think they're doing a good job. Is that piss off? That just sound, it that just just sound like that, didn't off, it? Didn't it? Piss I off. think it sounds like. <laughs> Jail language, what can I say? One, two, two people have heard witch beforehand. Oh, okay. That wouldn't be the first time I've been called that. <laughs> and people from the 1800s, this would be like witch Yeah, definitely, with all the little... You hear that? Please. Don't you want to hear them? The reason we're here is to show what a wonderful earthquake, what a wonderful place this is. And I know we've come to stay here because we wanted to stay and experience the history. And if more people come, then this saves your home. It means that your home will keep going. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> I can turn this off for a minute. But the big argument is... Closet third. Closet third. The big argument is the we've asked questions and you can hear how <laughs> words coming through. And again, I'm explaining because Mel doesn't know this stuff either. We're kind of listening for what we think an answer should be, and sometimes we hear a word and we go, oh, I think that said, and then somebody else will go, oh, but no, I think it said this. And we all have this kind of thing going, because we're biased to what we think we want to hear. So, what I'm going to do is take the bias out of it completely. I'm going to put a headset in, so, and then I'm going to go on a headset. So I don't hear the questions. You two, and all of you, Mel and Keg are going to ask questions. I'm going to put myself over there where the noises came from, I think. Good idea. Good idea. <laughs> For you, Lon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is this where the grave is? Yes, the behind, yes, behind that area, the toilet. Which is where the noise was coming from. Yes, twice. And you were asking about wanting to know, I'd like to know who is yeah. in that grave. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then bitch. Okay. Who's the bitch? I'm sure it's not you or me, Mel. I hope not. No, I'm sure it's not <laughs> us. Yeah. Why do you like this area? Did you work in the kitchen? Definitely. Oh, direct answer. Could you, can you whistle for us please? People are asking for you to whistle. What is it? Do you know where the graves are? It's a bit weird. It is a bit weird, and I do apologise for asking. I just wondered whether you'd be able to tell us. Did you used to work in the kitchens? It's another one. George. George. Okay. I don't know anything about No, okay. So, George, were you a prisoner here? 
or were you a guard? Okay with this being here? Playful. Oh, you said that, haven't you said yes. mischievous? Playful. Definitely. Very mischievous. Boy. Boy. Oh. That's interesting. It's we just had, been talking about the boy. We had young kids in here, yeah. How many ladies are in this room? Can you tell me that, please? No. Okay, fair enough. Well, maybe none of us are ladies. Maybe they are. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> How many females? That's, 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 let's just change it. How many females are in this room, please? Can you tell me? I'd be really grateful if you could. Again. Different area. Yeah, behind us this time. It's probably because Alison's moved over the other side. How many females? Can you tell me, please? Oh yeah, how many witches are in the room? That's a good question. That's a good one. What was your crime? Can you tell me that please? What was your crime? Nothing much. Anything relevant? Um, yeah, when I, I, I did ask what, what was the question I asked when you said no? Oh, how many, can you tell me how many women are here? How many ladies are here? Yes. yes. I said no. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it seemed to get words to start with. Right. And uh, it just beat it into Come on, you can do something with me. I'm all on my own now. Nobody's going to see it. The camera's turned off. Lady. Ooh. Lady. Yep. Just me. Goodbye. <laughs> it's just said, lady, goodbye. Are you leaving? I oh, don't leave. Lady. Lady again. You know, there's another lady just walked in. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm a lady. No, it just said, lady, goodbye. <laughs> Devil. Devil. <laughs> That's reassuring. Wicked word storm demand. That's the original doors, by the way. How cool is that? All right, good luck. All right, thank you. Yes, you can shut the door. Okay. Thank you. All right, so I'm just going to see if I can dim the light a little bit to about there. That's a reassuring sound. No green light on. What should I do? What should he do? Um, could you talk to me, please? I'm just in here to have a little chat. Just to see if anybody would like to talk to us. Very curious about jails and your history. Just said record, so nothing definite, guys. Hello. Hello. Who's in here with me? Anybody? I can't believe that sitting in here, it would have been a good experience for you. Carl. Carl, I've been told all about your story. And I have to admit, it's a very sad story. Okay, that sounded like a bit of movement in here with you guys. Just in the corner here, sound like shuffle. Uh, 
That's my jacket there, but this is more. Carl, I heard that you weren't really like that, that it was out of character. It's wrong. It could just be random as well, guys, because I. I'm going to move it in a minute, it might be too close to my phone. Afraid. You afraid? It would be very frightening in here. Especially when you know the next day, or coming up. that your execution was coming. I brought some gifts for you. Just gonna move that slightly away from the phone, guys, because it, I'm not convinced. It isn't randomly saying words because it's a bit close to where. Uh, I'm just gonna put it over there. And I like to be sure about things, guys. I'm going to do a um, EVP session, guys. All right. Can get that started. I'm just going to ask some questions. All right. So I'm just going to pop that down there. Carl, are you sorry for what you did? This box, other box over here, said flowers. Are you referring to the flowers, the roses that you had in your hands for your wife? You must have loved her very much. Mel's very fond with whoever's here. And James, they love to share their home with you. So hopefully you're happy that they're here. Mel feels very, very sorry. She feels a, a bit of a connection with you, Carl. love to share their home with you. Mel feels very, very sorry. She feels a, a bit of a connection with you, Carl. Oh, something else there. Footsteps. There. I don't know if it's to sound. I'm sorry about my bad photography, guys.
Yeah, it sounds like footsteps, doesn't it? <laughs> wow. Now, I'm going to go and charge my phone. I'm going to find Mel first. I'm going to wind up for you guys with Mel, so bear with me. I am going to turn this around and I'm going to go looking for the other guys. That's me, guys. Oh, I don't know if I can get out. I'm locked in. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. Hello. <laughs> Locked in the condemned cell. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> Were you watching? Yes. yes. Did you hear the EVP? Yes. We've heard footsteps too. That EVP yeah. was interesting. Yeah. I can't remember what the question was. It was something about you and James. Yeah. About you sharing the home. The home. Yeah. Sharing the home. Are you happy they're sharing? Yeah. Or something. Yeah. yeah. I do. Oh, well, there you go. Oh, there. <laughs> <laughs> happy. That was cool. That was cool. It was really How peaceful. Did you feel being in there? Really peaceful. Okay. Um, I actually thought it was more oh, welcoming in there okay. than in there. Wow. As in, in there, you got the feeling it was just out, get out, yeah. go away. Yeah. I think being one-on-one -on -one in there and talking to Carl, mm. and you heard the bit about the flowers that came mm. out, because it didn't click for me. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, no, that was cool. But we're about to, I'm just going to say everybody can see you, and I can blind you then. <laughs> On behalf of everybody who is watching, I do want to give a big, big thank you to Mel and James for mm. allowing you lot in, us in, but you lot in as well to share this. So, and definitely jump on to the Facebook page for the old Mount Gambia Jail and go and give them a like. And uh, if you're ever down this way, definitely come and stay here. It's a very unique no. place. Numb. <laughs> Did I say no or numb? No. no. Did it say no? <laughs> Of course, the residents here, the residents here may not want <laughs> strangers coming and going, but there you go. Everybody's going fabulous. Yeah, it's, right. it's okay, Carl. Yeah. yeah. They're all saying fabulous. Thank you so much. Amazing. You're so welcome. Um, brilliant. So I'm glad you've enjoyed it, guys. I know I've enjoyed it. It's so different, isn't it? So, um, how can they get in touch with you to Come down here oh, and stay. Just and jump on our website, theoldmategamblingjail.com.au, or look us up on booking.com or Airbnb and come down. Do you do history tours here as well? We do, and we also do big groups. We do um, tours, school excursions, school camps, all sorts of things. Excellent. So, and once the world gets back to normal, events and yeah, parties music and music yeah. and yeah, we yeah. Those. so there you go. Go and jump on their page, give it a like, and then you can keep up to date with any stories and come anything and that's happening here. and come and stay yeah, yes thanks a lot thanks for watching bye, bye.